Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is the Questionable Garage. Yes, the logo's still a little bit off. We're finishing it up. It's been the holidays. Cut me a break. Seriously, we're, we're, we're trying. It's just, we had to get the new name up and we're, we're working on it. But uh, sitting next to me is our 1972 or 74, possibly a 73, Ford Econoline E200 that Derek from Vice Grip Garage and I rescued from the woods. Jared found a super van. Maybe we'll get lucky. That felt like something. Now, if you haven't seen the revival getting it out of the woods and the drive over here, that is probably the most fun I've ever had with another guy in a van in my life. Uh, there were small fires. Today, I want to focus on something that's going to kind of help me guide, you know, it's going to guide which way I want to go. I have a problem with kind of going way over the top with every build I do. Uh, drag racing Lexus against the PFI speed guys. Uh, but at any rate, the plan with this thing is something maybe a little bit more simple. Derek wants to come back down. We're gonna spend a couple days and transform this thing into something just really cool. Although the more I look at it, I already think it's, uh, it's kind of cool already, but we need to know what we're working with. It's been sitting in the woods, lived in by mice, possums, probably some snakes. There's a lot of wildlife inside and there's just a lot of scuzz on it. We need to clean this thing. So for the first time in 32 years, we're gonna give this Econoline a bath and not just a bath, we are going to kind of work through and bring this patina out into something really, really cool. And I'm incredibly excited about it. And it's something I don't have a lot of experience with. So if you're watching this for a how to restore patina, we'll learn together. How's that sound? It doesn't look too bad, right? You know, we got the dog house off of it. You can see our beautiful 240 straight. Si <laughs> so um, there's six of these. It smells like a barber shop. That's Barbasol, you know, like shaving cream. <laughs> it's strong in here. Um, that's somehow, if you need to overpower rodent matter, those are the ticket. I mean, they're, they're doing it. Like legitimately parked by my shop door there. I could smell it inside. But anyway, this is our 240 straight six. And you know, up here, it's, it's you know, dirty, but not too bad. But um, if you look there, that's one giant mound of uh, poo, more poo, uh, house and poo, um, house and poo, house, more house. It's, it's horrendous in here. If you ever find yourself trying to clean something like this, I cannot stress it enough. You want to have a mask, a good mask, and you're gonna start with sweeping and vacuuming. Vacuuming is ideal because you're not gonna stir it up as much as you would with sweeping. As long as you're smart enough to aim your shop vac away from you and away from people. Otherwise, you're just supercharging dust into your mask. So our goal first is going to be getting the doors open and just taking known trash into the dumpster and get all of this cleaned up, then the vacuum, and then we can start pressure washing things and seeing how much floor is left. If Does it all look like that? Or do we have some good floor somehow under there? So um, let's fire up and get to work. Yeah, let's get some work gloves on and uh, find our treasures. Although I don't think there's that much for treasure in here. Oh, what have we gotten into? Oh. Wheel breaker for your 7,000. We'll keep that. That was empty. Oh. Eagle 7 spray K. I'm not sure. But this is just a box of poop. This is a really cool hand planer. I don't know if it's light sockets worth keeping. 
This is another giant box of nails. It's also full of mouse crap. So. This is our dog house. So we gotta keep some wings coating. Coke bottle, it's gotta be worth a nickel. I guess in Michigan it'd be 10 cents, right? You get interest on bottle deposits. No. Wow. Oh, hey, this will actually come in handy, dust pan. Electric motors, no value. and I'm getting bugs in my hair. Smells. Well, holy cow, two hours later and a lot of dead batteries. We have like a 99.9% .9 intact van floor. I'm over the moon excited finding out like how overall good this thing has been. I mean, it's, it's insane. We've got a little bit here and here and kind of similar around here, but <laughs> man. I'm incredibly excited about this. So that was two hours. Um, you probably aren't gonna see all two hours of it because it got a little monotonous, but here in a second, I'm gonna move it up and start pressure washing it. Now that we've got the solids out, it's a little bit safer to introduce water. So we're gonna pressure wash all the inside, then we're gonna pressure wash all the outside, and then I'm gonna start into a Comet scrub, which is gonna take forever. There is a lot of square footage on this fan, but it deserves it. Like it's just, it keeps surprising us. The fact we're able to get it running, drive it out of that hole, and now it's got an intact floor. Part of this video is I'm gonna introduce you to the three different build ideas that I have and see which one you like most, but I'm leaning really strong one way just now that this is clean and seeing inside here. So hopefully we can get that glass looking a little better because uh, you really can't see through it.
right, we are done pressure washing and I went ahead and did the Comet sand on the roof because there was so much scuzz, there was no hope of uh, pressure washing that. So let's take a look at what we've got now that it is clean. Well, mostly clean. I mean, I don't know, can you tell a difference? I sure can, especially when you look at the ground. I mean, huh. What I like is we've kind of got the natural scars. We know this door was replaced at some point and they repainted just that one little section. It's funny how differently it ended up rusting because of that. So there's not a ton of paint left up there, which is gonna give us a really good effect when we apply a little bit of protective coating. Let's see, can we see it or is the sun just not gonna cooperate? Yeah, you can kind of see it. So you go through, we get that done. Lots and lots of scuzz knocked off of this thing. And I am really excited about, uh, well, tomorrow where sun's going down and I got a couple family obligations tonight, but uh, we're gonna comment wash the rest of the van and see what it gives us. Things I'm looking forward to is like, I'll work a little more aggressively where it has basically just lost all of its paint. We'll blend that. We'll clean up some of these rust streaks and leave some of the others. Like I'll go ahead and make that a little bit more pronounced because well, that's natural. That's climbing in and out of the van. I'm looking forward to seeing, this is our vine scar and we're gonna dress that up a little bit. Just kind of let the van tell its story as we work our way through, just kind of cleaning and getting the grime off of it. Man, I am still just over the moon on this floor in here. Like, <laughs> also, Ah, smells nice-ish. I mean, it's a little, you know, moist. It doesn't just outright stink. Um, I also found a grave marker in the door. No letters. It's not what you expect to find, but um, man, this thing is solid in all the right spots. I've got this door latching. I need to actually adjust it up a little bit and that will work. Also off camera, I fixed Eric's door. So if we go for a ride again, he doesn't have to worry about falling out while he's fighting fires. I'm really excited about what we're slowly uncovering under the 32 years of grime. Um, this van has got a story to tell and I am really excited to give it the opportunity uh, to tell it. You know, it, it's gonna be kind of cool to see what we unearth as we're going through and just getting it clean. And then we decide its fate. Do we restore it? Do we hot rod it? Do we just let it be what it is? Who knows? Yeah, I'm gonna go out with a witty YouTuber transition and then totally forget like I always do tomorrow morning when we pick it back up and uh, start comment washing. So we'll see you then.
Well, the sun is setting and we are almost all done. And I just kind of wanted to take a second and share with you the technique I am using to try to clean this paint and get the rust stains off and let the paint underneath come through. Um, there's Ajax paint washing, uh, Comet washing, Scotch Brights. There's tons of different things that you can use to achieve this result. What I've found is working best on this van is, uh, thank you, Wynn, for blowing it down. SOS steel wool pads with soap built in. Um, they've just been cutting through and giving me the result that I'm looking for. Now, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. It's use the tools that are going to work and then put the amount of pressure you want to bring out the finish. So as you're going along, you'll want it wet, but right here, there's a little scar. If I wanted this to really pop and stand out more, I would just put more pressure directly on that. So predominantly what we're after is just getting the rust stains lifted. So it's a much lighter pressure and we're just working through to get that color to come through and have the blue there. So just kind of wet your work area. And then start going. Now, having worked on so many modern cars, I gotta be honest, going after a car with steel wool, it just feels wrong. But it is gonna give us that look of vintage paint, minor staining. There's sections where it's bare metal like right here. And once we finally get everything clean, that's when we get to come back and protect it and give it some shine. And just a light pressure. Let's say here where I want to make it a little more pronounced, you give more pressure. Also, if you're wondering, I'm tired. There is a, there's a lot of van here. And you see how small the pad is. And again, it's up to you how much you wanna work on getting out. If you wanna leave the standing under the letters, you just very gently scuff it. I'm trying to get a little bit more of it out. What I'm also finding is every panel of this van is requiring different effort and techniques and giving a different finish. Where it was sitting in the woods was just enough of a different of exposure that every side has been just a little bit different. It's getting chilly, I should have brought a jacket. And again, we're just trying to glide this. We're not shoving, we're not pushing hard. Now, if you're doing a faux tina where the paint is fresh and you're trying to make it look old, you would weather around a door handle because that's a spot that gets grabbed a whole lot. Horizontal surfaces. Now, I wish I knew a better trick for getting inside these emblems. I guess really the only trick is pulling them off like I did with all the window or the lights. Let's try to get this door done enough and then I can wrench it and we will have a side-by-side -side comparison. Now if you're not sure or worried about taking too much off you can rinse and always come back and try a little more. You don't have to get everything done on the first try. My arms are tired. It is gonna be worth it. Let us rinse. What do we have? Ah, that's looking good. I think that looks pretty substantial. There's still a little bit more, so now we can come back. Right here, still a little bit more staining than I'd like. We'll get that. I don't mind the staining too much around the letters. That's all pretty good. We'll get the edges when we open right here a little. 
Now this paint's got a lot of texture in it and that's really kind of hard to work with. So you kind of have to decide if you want to risk lifting it to get the staining out. CLR is also popular with this. I tried it, I wasn't having success. I just know there, there are so many different ways to do this. Experiment with what you like, what is gonna work on, what's working on your vehicle and have fun. Like this is where you get to work with nature and come up with the finish of your vehicle. Look at that. It's hard to believe like these were the exact same. You do that a whole lot more. And then finally, you have a real nice finished vehicle. Almost, you still have to uh, protect all of this. But that is something for tomorrow because it's getting dark and I'm cold. Hey, I, I didn't forget, even though we're like a whole day later and I talked to you guys after a bunch of time lapse, of sanding down the entire van and explained a little bit on the back doors for you, but we're done with that period of my life. There was so much sanding. When you're using a little piece of steel wool, it's, it's exhausting. It, there's a lot, especially when you're working with a van, but I am thrilled with the results. As you can kind of see, the rust staining is gone. We've got some raw metal. We've got primer coming through. It looks awesome. I'm loving how it looks, but you have to protect it. If you don't do anything to the paint now, well, in one or two rainfalls, it's gonna look just like it used to. And this is where you get to come up with the direction you wanna go. There is the option of clear coating it where you'll fully pull all oils out of the metal and actually spray an automotive clear coat. It kind of seals everything in. Now that generally is very, very glossy and there's some things you can do to actually make it a little bit more matte but it, it's a lot of effort and I'm not the biggest fan of that look because it almost pushes it down that look of the faux Tina, the fake Tina. This is real. The van has earned this sitting in the woods. It's got a scar from vines growing on it. Like we don't want to take that away from it. So there's some off the shelf patina juices. I know there's one coming from uh, our friend Derek. It's not quite ready. Um, that's option one that I would go with, but option two is making it ourselves. This is the shine juice, it is the just the linseed oil bath, where you're going to go ahead and mix boiled linseed oil. It has to be boiled. If it's not boiled, it's just, it's not gonna dry, it's not gonna give you the result you want. You use mineral spirits to cut it down, make it a little bit easier to spread, and actually let it dry on the car, and then if you want, you spray in a little WD-40. This is Derek's mixture. The WD-40 will actually make it a little bit more of a matte finish, take some of that shine off of it. So you're getting all the protection, a little bit of gloss, but it's not over the top. So the general formula is roughly a three to one ratio. Three parts of your boiled linseed oil, one part mineral spirit. Mix it all up, squirt a little WD in there, and uh, just start rubbing it on the van. So. What's really handy, and you can get these things really cheap at any auto body supply, um, are the ratio buckets, where they have predetermined marks, measuring lines, um, and since we're going three to one, it tells us, okay, th fill to that three line, then that three line, or four line, four line. It makes it really simple. Your other option is you just take a bucket and blindly pour it and guess. This is not a specific science. These are just loose ratios to get you close, and then you'd go to town. That is what's so fun about this patina look and the patina restoration is there is not the right way to do it. There's lots of ways and paths to get close and you just adjust it for what you want out of the vehicle because it's your vehicle. You're not doing this for anybody else. It's for you to enjoy. So, you know, and that really applies to the entire automotive modding community. A lot of people get a lot of hate for different things they do to their car. As long as you're not hurting anyone else or stancing your vehicle out, have fun, build it for you. Now, I will also caution, try to do this outside well ventilated. These are very flammable ingredients. They can catch fire and you want to go ahead and make sure you let the vehicle fully flash off and sit for a while before bringing it inside near ignition sources because it can catch fire. And if you've got any of your mixture left over, 
seal it up. Don't leave rags in it. Don't leave anything else in it because it can self ignite in certain circumstances. And we don't want you to uh, burn down your new beautiful ride just uh, because you made a mistake like that. So I'll mix some of this up and then we'll pick it back up and uh, apply to the vehicle. All right, so you're finishing up your mixture. You'll dip in your shop rag and then you just start spreading. You get it on there. You wanna make sure it's a nice even coat. It's a little tricky since this van is literally just a flat surface. It's gonna run down a fair bit, but it's gonna self level. It's gonna give us a lot of color. It's gonna bring back some of uh, what we were keeping in the rust color. It's gonna make this blue look a whole lot shinier. And because this is such a huge van, I'm just gonna go, go extra and we'll start. Now this will go a really, really long ways. So you probably don't have to mix up quite as much as I did, but I, I did, I have that much. Now it's just a process of coating everything. Let it sit a little bit, come back, rub it a little bit more to level it off and uh, enjoy what you've created. Why did we have to pick the biggest stinking vehicle possible? Do they get bigger? I guess we could have picked a Freightliner. Actually, as I'm going, I feel like I need a little more mineral spirits in my mixture. It's a little too oily still. Now I'm gonna have a ton left over. Nice. What's your favorite mixing technique? To avoid splashing, I do the little circle swirly. But I guess it also depends what I'm mixing. I'm liking that a little bit more. But yep, now it's just rubbing and more rubbing. You can't quite see it in either camera angle yet, but where you're hitting some of those rust spots, it really gives it a really cool color. The roof's going to be a lot of fun too, especially since I decided to start with the sides. We got some ants hanging out too. They're going to have fun. But yeah, so that's your process. You can kind of see it start to shine up and go dull. So uh, cue the time lapse to where it's suddenly finished, right? Well, time lapse and finish, but glossy, dull, glossy, doll that's also unprotected protected are you guys ready this has been a tremendous amount of work, but it is 100% worth it. The result, I, I can't believe this is a van that just a short while ago was buried in the woods, vines growing through it. It was buried to the bottom of it. It was in the ground. And Derek and I got it up out of the ground, got it running, and we drove it over here. And now I spent it took me longer to clean this van than it did for us to get this thing running. It's unreal. Are you guys ready to see it? It's right behind you, but I'm not going to do the turn the camera around and reveal it because I've got an amazing editor. Dwayne does a fantastic job. So um, I'm not gonna do a simple turnaround. We're gonna cut to Dwayne giving us an epic montage of it all the way into the ground to how it used to look like and what it looks like now because well, you guys deserve it. The van deserves it. So uh, cue montage now.
seriously, can you believe this is the same van? Now, I was torn as we were going through, were we getting too much rust off of it? No, this is perfect. I was really careful as we were cleaning. We still have our vine scar. It's, it tells such a wonderful story. The linseed oil has done an amazing job giving this color just enough shine, not too much. Got those wheels shined up. Now, I'll be honest, you probably could have gotten a little bit more out of those hubcaps, but you need to make a styling choice. And my styling choice was not at all influenced by the fact that I've been uh, sanding the entire van for two days and my shoulders and arms were completely tired. No, 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 no. I, I wanted them to look like that. Not that I just flat was out of energy, but look at this thing. We kept just enough rust. We've got the primer, we've got the raw metal. The linseed oil is going to do an amazing job of protecting that metal. Now we do have to regularly reapply it, but I think it's worth it. I'm over the moon excited with how this whole thing came out, how this whole project is going. I've seen this van sitting in that woods for many, many years and to be able to uh, give it a whole nother chance at life, like that's, that's what's really cool. It, it wants to keep on going. So if you watch the original revival with Derek, we kind of threw the question out, how are we gonna build this? What are we gonna do to, to make it even more exciting and, and more of a project? Derek does a lot of revivals. I do a lot of really crazy builds here. And we were asking for some suggestions. We've gotten anything from what we were kind of joking about, two engines, wheelie van, drag race van, new burnout machine, some practical ones like a camper van. There's been suggestions all over the place and i have a really bad problem of overbuilding everything i'll be honest burnout machine off the table the, this thing it survived in a rain wash for 32 years like it's it deserves like a proper proper revival in life not just uh throw it together i like the idea of camper van um if i could somehow get a much more powerful engine better suspension and brakes use it as the tow rig then I don't have to worry about Motel 6 canceling my rooms like they did during the drag race challenge. I've got a place to sleep. But that, again, snowballs into this really crazy expensive build and I'm trying to avoid that. I want this to prove to you guys that you and a friend can go in, find something that's been forgotten about, get it on the road and then make it incredibly cool on a budget. I'm really leaning like, again, there's, there's three potential things. An insane, a little bit of a hot rod V8, and some type of just utilitarian interior and make it just a you know hot rod parts runner we can do a whole chassis swap we put the whole thing on something more modern but that's really tricky with these snub nose vans we could do something like that i talked about doing a barra swap which is basically the modern 300 and 240 in australia still like that idea but i'm leaning really hard one direction and i want you guys to tell me what you think about it because this thing survived just so well, I think I wanna do a period build. Just build it like we were building it in 1980. Maybe some slot mags, put some type of fun bench seat party interior, and we'll either put a Ford 300 or we just hot rod the engine in there. We don't need to have insane horsepower. We want this to be a cool cruiser and something that you and a couple guys in the garage can bang out and get done together. I, we don't need everything to have a thousand horsepower and be insanely fast. I think hot rod in a 240 with a couple little, you know, questionable garage tweaks in there with a really cool interior and just save on that look, give it some wheels and maybe get it a little lower to the ground. That's what I think. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm thrilled. There, there's nothing more satisfying than finishing something like that. We've made a van look incredibly cool that's able to move around. We know what we've got to play with and we just need to uh, get parts together and get our friend out here and uh, finish it. So as always, I'm Jared reminding you guys to always make questionable choices. And if you have an opportunity to save some classic metal from the woods, go for it. You're gonna have a whole lot of fun. You're gonna get a couple scars, but uh, you get something Come on, Jared, you can move the camera. You're gonna get something amazing out of it. All right, guys, we'll see you.